Hello, here we are for part four of lecture 21 of CENG 4412 Steel and Concrete Design. All right, let's continue right where we left off. I wanna talk about, in this video, I wanna talk about the uh, capacity of plate, uh, of bolted connection plates uh, in bearing strength. So as we saw previously, we had uh, several possible failure methods for bolted connections, including bolt uh, shear, uh, bearing failure, and other types of failure. This we've already discussed previously. Uh, bearing failure is what we're going to cover now. Bolt shear will wait till another video. And I also want to put together a video on edge spacing requirements. So let's look at uh, bearing strength. Bearing strength. Bearing strength. Okay. So consider a bearing basically is going to be a tearing failure. Let's consider a plate. Uh, let's say, imagine I were to make a plate. I had a plate, remember ending here, and let's say it ended here and it continued on in some direction, some distance that way. Well, that doesn't look very good. That looks better, okay. And I apply a big load P here. And I don't care how thick this is. Let's just say I can, and let's say I have the ability, let's say I magically have the ability to, to apply an arbitrary large load. And let's say I have a hole in this plate and input into it, I put an infinitely strong beam, or not infinitely strong beam, an infinitely strong bolt. So this bolt is made of un unobtainium and it will never fail. It, it will never fail. It has a shear strength large enough to hold up the whole planet um, and nothing will ever make it, ever make the bolt itself fail in shear or in tension or anything else. The bolt is itself indestructible. Um, but the plate it is embedded in is, will not. If I pull, put this thing in a, in a plate and start pulling on it sideways with P here, what's going to happen? Well, obviously it's actually, it's going to un end up eventually just tearing out of the plate. Um, and so now when you actually design these things, we're gonna have to calculate the strength of all of the individual components and then see which is the lowest one. And that's the design strength of our connection. But if we were looking at just the plate, let's say I could magically put an infinitely strong bolt into a plate of regular steel and then see what happens. Well, if you did this, you would find that the actual failure plane is something like this. You know, the, the failure plane would end up going out like an angle here. This is the actual failure plane. So the actual failure plane is gonna be going off at an angle. And the problem with this is just like with block shear, this is a combination of uh, tension and shear, angle, uh, shear failure. And so the stress becomes very difficult to calculate. And so the way we handle this in steel design is that we instead use an idealized failure plane. We use an idealized failure plane, and this is not really its true a connection's true full capacity but because connections are where things tend to be. If they were, this is because connections tend to be the most vulnerable part of a structure. It really behooves us to be very conservative in our designs. So what we do is, even though the actual failure plane is at an angle here, we use an idealized failure plane like this in bearing. We say the uh, the uh, the idealized failure plane is like this. We're going to say, okay, well, um, this is our idealized failure plane. This is what we're actually going to count on. And this makes it not only more conservative, but it also makes it much more easy, to, much easier to design. So basically we have a pure shear um, plane. A pure shear failure plane. And the reason for this is that this exact angle, what, what, what angle it goes out at, now I, mean, I make it look like a 45 degree angle or a 30 degree angle or something like that, but the actual angle that this thing's gonna tear out is gonna be uh, very difficult to predict. It's gonna be a function of material properties and thickness and a dozen other things, and it's very difficult to predict. It's not something we really wanna count on because how variable it is, and especially because of how critical connections really are to the uh, life sustaining ability of structures. So instead what we do is we say, you know what, let's not worry about that. Yes, we'll end up uh, saying that this connection can withstand less load than it really can, but let's just say, forget the diagonal. We'll just, we'll just stick with the straight horizontal idealized failure plane. And we'll look at a pure, we'll consider a pure shale, uh, failure, uh, we'll, cons we'll consider a pure shear failure 
for our um, bearing failure here. Okay, and I want to define a variable that I'm going to call LC, and we'll see this later on when we look at, in the next video, and look at uh, spacing requirements as well. LC, and you could, L sub C, you can consider this a clear length or a clear distance. L sub C, this is a, a clear distance. In this case, L sub C is the distance from the edge of the bolt to the edge of the outer, uh, to the outer edge, basically, the edge of the plate. So LC is a clear distance, basically the longest length of pure plate along the, the line we're looking at. And uh, I don't want you to always think that it's from the edge of the bolt to the edge of the plate. Um, we will see different variations of this where sometimes we define it between bolt holes, etc. Um, anyway, now, and I also need to define another thing, and this is T. This is the uh, thickness of the plate, or the thickness of the part, thickness of the plate, etc. The thickness of the part uh, or plate. So when I say it could be an actual plate, or it could be the flange, web, etc., etc. Okay, so let's consider this here. Now, if I want to find the nominal resistance of this uh, connection, of this hole, the nominal resistance is going to be equal to 2, because I have two failure planes here, it's going to be equal to 2 times, and so this, we don't have a factor of safety on here yet, or sorry, a resistance factor here yet, but it's going to be 2 times 0 0.6 F, uh, 0 0.6 F ultimate, 0 0.6 Fu, and 0 0.6, we saw this when we looked at uh, shear stress before, shear uh, capacity of webs, of beams. Uh, 0 0.6 because this is a shear, uh, this is a fracture shear strength. That shear, uh, typically, again, when you want to transform tension to tensile stress in steel to, to shear, you multiply by 0 0.6. Uh, fracture shear strength. Uh, times LC times T. So basically the LC times T, this is the area of this one uh, line here. And so basically just all this is is a multiplication of uh, the area times the allowable stress, or not times the allowable stress, times the stress, the shear stress, times two, showing that there are two shear planes. And then this becomes embedded within the code. The actual design equation we see in the code is that RN is equal to 2 times 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.6 Fu. Uh, well, if I just multiply that out, actually, this becomes 1.2 times Fu uh, LC uh, times T. And this is equation J36A uh, in the AISC steel manual. And let me go ahead and pull up the, uh, my, go through, paw through my edition and give you exa an exact page number on there. I can hear the pages turning, it's great. Uh, anyway, uh, J3-6A, this is on page 16.1-136 uh, of my printing of the 15th edition. Uh, page 16.1-136. 136. 16.1-136. Uh, let's see here, and uh, uh, let's see, 16.1, I shouldn't, uh, one point, uh, actually that is not 3-6, uh, that is 3-6C, sorry, not, not 3-6A, sorry about that, that's a little error in my notes there, 3-6C. Anyway, and then it, you see what it describes there is, that's describing tear out when deformation of the bolt holder as service load as a design consideration, or when, um, so when deformation at the bolt hole at service load is a design consideration. And we'll be talking about, well, we'll talk a bit more about these uh, in a bit. So uh, then here, uh, let's consider this. Now, uh, to prevent excessive uh, deformation uh, or elongation of the hole due to bearing, you have to be very careful because if you allow too much elongation, your bolt just might slip right out. 
um, excessive elongation of hole due to bearing. Wow, that's the word hole, oh my goodness. Well, um, the code uses an approach Basically, as you can see, if you're looking at your steel manual, you'll see that there are all sorts of equations that have the general formula Rn equals some constant C uh, times the bearing area times uh, the ultimate U, uh, the ultimate allowable stress. In this case, this would be 0.6 times the actual um, shear stress, etc., etc., uh, times the shear, uh, bolt, the bearing area. Uh, C times the bearing area times F ultimate. And the C includes the uh, a factor for the shear stress transformation. Uh, but the uh, C there uh, is going to be equal to what? The C is going to be equal to, however, uh, is also equal to um, here. Um, we can see in J3-6E that there are other transformations for this, or uh, also 3-6A uh, here, in a variety of these. Um, when we look at the actual bolt, we can have C times uh, D times T times FU. And this is the where D is the diameter of the bolt, And a C of 2.4 is sufficient to uh, limit hole elongation one quarter to one quarter inch or less. And you can read through the code and see that there are many different equations here. There are a whole bunch of them, actually six different ones that we might consider. Um, and each of these apply in different cases. But in our case, what we're going to use, we're going to combine all these together into one sort of master equation, both combining both the effects of uh, excessive elongation, which is, again, this is where you see, this is equation uh, J3-6A, uh, uh, J3-6A, essentially, and this is equation J 3-6C. And we're, but we're just gonna combine them together to, dis, that say for the, that to say for the case of bearing that the nominal resistance is equal to 1.2 times LC uh, times T. And I believe actually the code uses a lowercase LC times T times FU, F ultimate, is less than or equal to 2.4 uh, times D, bolt diameter, times T, times FU, and the smaller of these will control. The, so basically we'll calculate each of these number, uh, each of these quantities, each side, each side of this inequality, and the smaller one of these will be our allowable uh, load, or sorry, not our allowable, our nominal resistance for a for the bearing of the plate itself, for the strength of the plate itself, not counting the previous tension load cases that we learned in the first unit. Uh, smaller controls, of course, and a few notes also. Uh, other um, uh, values of C are possible, as you can find on page 16.1-136. Uh, if deformation is not critical, and so, but for our class here, for our bolt uh, diameter equations, we're going to use a C equal to two point four. And also, uh, of course, we need to apply the equation that phi R n is greater than or equal to P ultimate, our factored capacity must be greater than or equal to our factored load. And if you see in, um, because this is a fracture failure, phi is going to be equal to 0 0.75. So you would wanna go ahead, to get phi RN, you would multiply 0.25, or sorry, 0.75 to all of these things. So phi RN 
is basically uh, our actual ultimate design capacity of a connection uh, for bearing is going to be 0.75 times Rn, which an Rn is the smaller of these. Okay, so that's the basic idea of bearing capacity for uh, bolted connections. So we've covered bearing failure, and we still need to, I, in the next video, I want to cover some, um, some spacing requirements, and then we'll need to cover bolt shear strength itself. All right, that'll do it for this portion of the video. And as always, thank you.